Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This video builds on my previous video in which I talked through some of the principles involved in designing the steering mechanism for tilting vehicles such as trikes or velomobiles. In this video I'm going to show you some animated CAD models which demonstrate what happens when these principles are applied in the real world. In this first example I've got a simple arrangement with a single upper and lower wishbone centrally pivoted. The steering arms are pointed forwards but the outer ball joints are positioned not in perfect alignment with where they would be for the Ackerman geometry. The tie rods are slightly shorter than the distance between the central pivot and the outer pivots of the wishbones. The bell crank is orientated with its axis in the horizontal position. Looking from underneath you can see the sawtooth shapes that I've included to show the Ackerman geometry. Just in case you're wondering I've arrived at this sawtooth by plotting out the geometry of the Ackerman steering it with the uh, various turn radiuses as you can see in this diagram here. I'm not going to explain in detail how I've done it but you'll just have to take my word for it that it does work. The steering axes are angled both backwards and inwards. Backwards being to give the wheels castering action and inwards so that the steering axis intersects with the centre of the tyre's contact patch at the ground. In front view the tilting action works like this. And the steering action works like this. This view is looking from underneath and we'll just see how the Ackerman geometry works. So here are the wheels both pointed straight ahead. So in this view you can see that with a moderate amount of steering applied uh, the wheel on the right is not aligned with the fourth sawtooth which is where it should be if the Ackerman geometry was being followed properly. So in other words in this arrangement the wheels are towing in slightly on steering. We could adjust this by altering the various aspects of the geometry. I'm now going to apply some tilt and we'll see what that's done to the steered wheels. So without adjusting the steering you can see that with this particular arrangement when we've applied that amount of tilt the wheels are now towing in. If we now apply some steering we can see that the wheels are now towing in significantly when we try to steer. So with this arrangement what I've found is that the wheels are towing in far too much and that the tilting action is affecting the angle of the wheels and the Ackerman geometry is not being followed very closely at all. We could change this by altering the length of the tie rods and by altering the position on the steering arms of the outer ends of the ball joints. Now let's look at my second example. So this is a little bit different. In this case we've got split wishbones. They're separated top and bottom around the centre uh, and because they're split I've had to introduce this arrangement at the top, the pyramid kind of arrangement, uh, where the diagonal pieces would in fact be su suspension compression springs. So in this case I've got aft steering arms, uh, the tie rods are positioned fairly low down and the bell crank is again orientated with its axis in the horizontal position. Moving around to front view, let's see how the tilting action works. And the steering. We're now looking at the bottom view with the, with the tilting action level and the wheels pointed straight ahead. So with the tilt level let's see how the Ackerman action works. Moving the wheel on the left to the fourth position, the wheel on the right is understeering slightly. In other words it's towing in slightly but that's certainly within tolerance I think. Let's apply some tilt and see what effect that has on the angle of the steered wheels. So back in the bottom view I've got about 30 degrees of tilt applied and you can see that the wheels are still pointing pretty much straight ahead. There's a very tiny bit of toe in but probably well definitely nothing that we would need to worry about. Now with the same tilt applied let's adjust the steering and see what happens. So moving the wheel on the left to the fourth serration, the wheel on the right is towing out very slightly, but that's close enough. That's certainly within tolerance, so this arrangement is working quite well. The Ackerman geometry has been followed closely in both the level and the tilted positions. The main reason for that is that the Ackerman geometry is being preserved fairly closely. The tie rods are more or less the same length as the lower wishbones, and the outer ball joint is positioned such that the 
steering arm is pointed more or less at the centre of the rear axle. Now on to my third arrangement. The wishbone arrangement again is split top and bottom, so the lengths of the top and the bottom wishbones are equal. This time I've positioned the bell crank high up, again with its axis horizontal, uh, and effectively the steering arms are pointing forwards rather than backwards. The length of the tie rods is such that they're more or less the same length as the lower wishbones. And because of the high position of the tie rods, the Ackerman geometry is being preserved. There's the tilting action. There's the steering action. Looking at bottom view, we'll test the Ackerman geometry. So steering the wheel on the left to the fourth serration, the wheel on the right is pointing between the third and the fourth serration. So we have got toe-in going on here. And this gets worse as the angle of the steered wheels is increased. So now let's apply some tilt. So you can see that with this arrangement, the 30 or so degrees of tilt has not affected the angle of the steered wheels with the wheels pointing straight ahead. So still with the tilt applied, let's see what happens with the steering at this position. So again, moving the wheel on the left to the fourth serration, you can see that the wheel on the right is also pointing directly at the fourth serration. So for this lean angle, the Ackerman geometry is being followed perfectly. So what this example shows is that we can tune the geometry so that it's accurate for certain steering angles, or for certain lean angles rather. So with the vehicle upright, the Ackerman geometry wasn't being followed entirely properly, but with a more realistic lean angle applied, the geometry was correct. Uh, and it's actually when we're leaning where we need to worry the most about the geometry. So the fourth example is similar to the previous one, in that the upper and lower wishbones are separated but equal in length and at right angles to each other, or rather parallel to each other and at right angles to the verticals. Uh, this time we've got the bell crank positioned with its axis vertical and the steering arms are effectively pointing backwards. The tie rods are positioned low down and the length of the tie rods is slightly less than the length of the bottom wishbones but approximately the same. So let's test the Ackerman geometry by pointing the wheel at the fourth serration. So here you can see that the wheel on the left and the wheel on the right are both pointing at the fourth serration, which means the Ackerman geometry is being followed, well, perfectly. But when we get to the very extreme steering angles, the wheels are starting to toe out. But those steering angles are probably greater than we would experience in real life, so we can probably discount them. So in the front view, the tilting action works like this. And the steering action works like this. Now apply some tilt and see what that's done to the wheel angle. So with this arrangement, the wheel alignment is being preserved with the fairly high amount of tilt applied. And we'll apply some steering. So what we can see here is that the wheels are starting to tow in when the tilt is applied. So the wheel on the right is pointing between the third and the fourth serrations, whereas the wheel on the left is pointing at the fourth serration. So we've got the opposite to the previous example, which started to tow out. With this example, we're towing in on tilt. So this design is quite successful. It pretty much follows the Ackerman geometry starts to get a little bit worse as the tilting angle increases but I reckon as it is it's close enough to be within tolerance and with a bit of fine tuning of the bell crank dimensions and the tie rod positioning and so on we could probably get this spot on. And on to my final example. This design is a little bit different in that we've got a single top wishbone centrally pivoted but separate bottom wishbones with the pivots offset slightly around the centre line. It's also a bit different in that the vertical pieces pivot around their top and bottom ends in their entirety rather than being fixed as in the previous design and holding the swivelling piece. Moving around to the front view, the swivelling pieces which are in blue are angled slightly so that their axis points as close as I can get it to the centre of the tyre contact patch but there is a little bit of an offset. Also moving around to the rear view, the length of the tie rods is exactly equal to the length of the lower wishbones and the tie rods are positioned low down so that they're directly behind the lower wishbones. 
this is better for aerodynamics. The steering arms are arranged so that the outer ball joints are positioned exactly on the Ackerman geometry. So a line between the steering axis and the ball joints will coincide with the centre of the rear axle. So here's how the tilting action works. And here's the steering action. Let's check the Ackerman geometry in the bottom view. So I'm looking at the bottom edge of the wheels here. So the wheel on the left is pointed at the fourth serration and the wheel on the right is also pointed at the fourth serration. So the Ackerman geometry upright is spot on. Now let's apply 30 degrees or so of tilt back in the bottom view. Again, with the tilt angle applied, the Ackerman steering is perfectly preserved. So with this particular design that maintains the Ackerman geometry perfectly, and with the tie rods exactly equal in length to the lower wishbones, we've got a very good case where the tilting angle doesn't affect the angle of the steered wheels and the Ackerman geometry is preserved throughout the tilting range. So that's the end of the video. I hope you found this useful and I hope you've learned something. If you spotted any mistakes in what I said, please let me know in the comments below. Hopefully there aren't too many. If you like the video, please remember to subscribe to the channel and click the like button and hit the bell for reminders of future videos. Thanks and goodbye.